Welcome back, of course, this is K24 this morning. And as promised, we have what many people are calling the first lady of sport. If it's sporting action and you need the lowdown on that, you have her front and center to make sure she gives you all the details of that. But she has a very interesting journey uh, from where she started to where she is now. Carol Radul, media personality extraordinaire. Karibu sana. Hey, thank you. And I didn't even pay you to say that. <laughs> I wanted to check. I thought that in person was it wasn't your. <laughs> it was, I thought I could have sworn I saw Carol Redu. <laughs> Karibu Sunday to the show. Thank you. Um, quick one. Yesterday, uh, Kenya Uganda. How did you find the game though? It was an amazing game, at mm -hmm. least the second half. The first half were completely outplayed. Right. But it is also Francis Kimanzi's first international, so uh -huh. go easy on him. Right. The good thing, he was able to read the first half, come mm -hmm. back in the second half and give us a totally different game. Right. So what I saw in the second half, 1-1, one, one, fair result. Mm -hmm. And uh, he has something to work with for us to improve. So I'm not worried, not he, yet. He has your confidence. He does. Uh -huh. He always has had. Right. Since right. 2008 when he was managing the team uh -huh. the first time around. And it's so interesting because we're having this conversation now, Carol. But way back when... Carol did not want to be a sports journalist. She didn't even want to be a journalist in the first place. You wanted uh, to be 50,000 feet above sea level. Yes, my yes. childhood dream. Well, I had two. One was to be an air hostess, but then I get air sick. So uh -huh. clearly, if I can't handle myself in a seat, <laughs> Might how be am I looking after other others. people? <laughs> then I realized, no, 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 that's not for me. Then I wanted to be an actor. So mm -hmm. I actually went to acting school. Right. Unfortunately, way back when, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if some of you were born, mm -hmm. um, acting never paid unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the next best thing was uh, to be a journalist because <laughs> I had a voice to broadcast. So I kind of stumbled into journalism. Right. But uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm in my 40s, but I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Right. You're still, you're, you're still I'm discovering. I'm still deciding. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever act after going to acting school? Did you do a couple of plays? I did a couple of plays on stage. Mm -hmm. National Theatre, uh, Phoenix, uh, French Cultural Centre. Mm -hmm. Been there, done that. But when I started, I mean, my first journalism job was with... Um, uh, uh, Reuters, if I went to the BBC, and with Reuters, you travel a lot around the region. Mm -hmm. So I would rehearse for a play for two weeks, and on the week we were supposed to go live, we're like, hey, something has broken out in Rwanda. What? You need to run. So it I wasn't to, working. It wasn't working. Mm -hmm. It was not a side hustle that was working with my main hustle. And for somebody who stumbles into journalism and ends up at Reuters, People mm. don't stumble into Reuters. People work, <laughs> usually work really hard <laughs> to get there. How did that happen for you? I was actually freelance broadcasting news on our national um, broadcast station. Mm -hmm. um, that was Kitambo Sana. Um, so um, from there, somebody actually heard me on the radio. Somebody I was working with uh, at uh, Omo Pika Box, which was a long, long time ago. Uh -huh. And he wow. said, hey, we've started this uh, program called Africa Journal. At mm -hmm. the time, it was under pan uh, camera pics under Mohammed Amin, mm -hmm. uh, the late great. Yeah. So he said, come for a voice test. So it just started with a voice test. And he was like, hey, Mohammed Amin had this thing about wanting to grow Kenyan talent. Mm -hmm. So even though back then it was literally a complete um, English team, he said, no, 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 this is the future. Bring on that young girl with right. a voice. Right. So yeah, it was an accident. And the young girl <laughs> was brought one. on board. I was brought on board to mm -hmm. Africa Journal, which was, and then uh, within the first year, they moved it from camera picks to Reuters. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to Reuters, uh, the boss there said, no, 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 I want you to do hard news. So I did a bit of hard news. I did uh, business journalism. I was a business writer. Right. Print. <laughs> Not even television. <laughs> print business writer. Um, uh, covered news in Rwanda. Post-genocide. Genocide was too long ago. Post-genocide. Um, refugees, famine in South Sudan, I've done the whole nine yard. Mm -hmm. I've even covered parliament. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. And as all of this was going on, were you, were you liking the pace of the newsroom or was keeping you going? Because clearly you aren't enjoying the politics or the um, business. Well, it affects your life. So uh -huh. if it affects your life, it's of a bit of interest. Right. But no, I did not want to do politics full time. I, I couldn't complain. Mm -hmm. It was a paycheck, a pretty decent one. Mm -hmm. um, but... I've always been a f sports fan. I guess I never thought it could be a career. Right. It was uh, just like everybody right now thinks it's that thing you do over the weekend. Right. And I soon realized, actually, it can also bring a paycheck. Uh, uh -huh. So why not? Uh -huh. <laughs> and, yeah. and for you, with all of this going on, how, was you, how are you thinking about getting out of this? Because, yes, you're getting the paycheck, but the passion was on the back of burner. How did you get your way out and like, okay, fine, this is what I'm going to do? My life has been a series of good accidents. Right. Because uh, when I joined Radio Africa, it was to do hard news. It was to run the radio newsroom. And uh, I would watch sport over the weekend. And I guess after being there for about uh, six years, 
uh, the program controller then was like, hey, we need somebody to mm -hmm. uh, be around on Saturday. And it was actually Jimmy Gathu's show on Saturday afternoon, playing music. And Jimmy, if you know him, knows very little about football. <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. Um, and so I was supposed to come in and just give a bit of football banter as uh, Jimmy mm, plays, plays the music. The music. Uh -huh. And I was actually holding fort for Maina, who was not around for his first show. Wow. And by the time he was around for his third show, that's Maina <laughs> Kageni, um, the program controller said, no, 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 you join him. Right. So, yeah, another so that's good you, accident. another accident that happened right there. And then after two years, Maina was like, eh, me, I have better things to do on Saturday on afternoon. Saturday afternoon. So <laughs> you take it over, look for your own team. And, uh -huh. yeah, this is how many? Since 2006, wow. 13 years later. And when people look at this and they're like, okay, fine. For somebody who loved or loves sport so yeah. much, how did it get into your system? What was your first you know, interaction with sport? Was it a family thing? Go and play, go and watch? Sport was since I was, I guess, since I was born. I've been swimming since, I, as far as I can remember. I don't remember learning how to swim, which means clearly it happened uh -huh. when I was a baby. Um, so I was a swimmer. I played nearly every racket game. Uh, uh, soccer? No. Mm -hmm. I did a bit of uh, football, not soccer. Uh -huh football <laughs> okay you can say soccer uh -huh. yeah i did a bit of uh, uh football in for i think form one and two because it was compulsory mm -hmm. but it's those things you do like hockey you do and then you quit because it's too hard <laughs> <laughs> but i played a lot of sport uh, my parents played golf tennis squash literally everything so mm -hmm. i grew up in a family that everybody basically plays sport right and even so as this was going on because you know mm. at the end of the day when you go home you'll have the discussions what you guys want to do when you grow up your sister also is very passionate about sport as well my did, sister did also played everything she's one of the few people in my age group who can beat me in swimming oh, oh really <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a challenge to everyone out there if you think you can beat hey, i'm a good swimmer uh -huh. don't challenge me i'm a good swimmer <laughs> And uh, in that particular <laughs> space in time where you, you know, this interest in sport was fostered, for you, did you ever think of probably even you know, taking it further, getting a medal, representing the country? Was that ever on your cards uh, as a on, In swimming, I almost did. Mm -hmm. It was just the calendars never actually added up. Really? It was but a calendar yes. issue? Yes. Uh -huh. But yes, I am that good a swimmer, if I should say so myself. Right. Um, but no, and I guess uh, the generation we grew up with, sadly, and still, uh, right now, mm -hmm. you have to be a teacher, a lawyer, a doctor, mm -hmm. a journalist. You know, you have to have a, a real job in quotes. Right. So you think that is the fun thing you do over the weekend. But as we've seen all over the world, man, some of the richest people in the world, mm -hmm. highest earners are sports people. Right. So you realize that a bit later. I don't know when Kenya will realize it, but yeah, and sport for, should be a career. And for you, you realize that, okay, fine, this thing that I do on the weekend, like you said, can actually be a Monday to Friday thing and I could earn, you know... It is a Monday, Monday to Friday minutes. thing. The people we watch um, on TV, that is their career. That is what they do. They wake up to do that every they single day. They wake up to do that every single day and they mm -hmm. earn a damn good living doing it. Right. So you quickly learn that why is the same not happening in my country? Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, the people, the powers that be, don't recognize the value of sport. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. um, and... We still don't pay our sports people, but even the fans, it's like it's supposed to be that thing we do for fun, mm -hmm. but we don't realize that we can also contribute to the growth of our sport industry. We can go to the stadium, we can pay entrance fee, you know, that's how they make their money. And as long as the fans are coming, the corporates will come as well. And for you, how did you rebrand yourself from this hard news uh, journalist and now the voice of, you're literally the voice of sport. Do you know, it's just, I think it's the audience. Uh -huh. There are people out there who never heard me doing hard news. They can't even imagine. So they can't that. even imagine <laughs> that there was a time I never did sport. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm not too worried about, I don't know, you know, people think I'm serious. I'm just a fan. I'm just a <laughs> fan who opens the microphone and starts talking about what I watch and what I like. So I don't know, and I get paid for it. <laughs> Let me tell you, if the, the if joke's on you. <laughs> let me tell you, one thing you know with Radu, she's a fan of the sport, but when she means business, my goodness, she mm -hmm. makes sure everything is lined up proper. This is where we are going. This is what's going to happen next. Very if, meticulous to detail. If you're going to do something, do it right. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to say, if you're going to want people to take sports seriously, you also have mm -hmm. to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. As much as I joke, um, at the end of the day, it's serious business. Right. 
and unfortunately you can if so, if nobody can do something right for you do it yourself mm -hmm. but you're so right i'm very meticulous i'm a stickler for detail and i keep time I was oh yes time. oh yes that's <laughs> one thing you do know with Karen. you tell us when 20 she's there at that particular time but for mm -hmm. somebody who like you said is a fan of what she does mm -hmm. you've got a chance to meet very many people who you know you watch very many different international celebrities fortunately mm -hmm. you know i have managed to partner with uh, i mean like uh, super sport with a lot of big brands who also interact with uh, big names. Mm -hmm. um, I've met, uh, I mean, I met Thierry Henry. We have oh, a couple of pictures here that we we'll put up on the screen as well. You can tell mm -hmm. us uh, at this point in time, was this the one that took your breath away? Oh. Here we go. Oh, yes, David Rudisha, the Wanyama brothers, yes. Uh -huh. um, Victor and uh, 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 McDonald Mariga. We actually, I was actually with Mariga yesterday mm -hmm. watching the game, yeah. Right. He was representing his brother, Dennis Oliech, Kenyan superstars, you know. Mm -hmm. These are guys who've managed to um, break the odds and go and actually make money abroad. Mm -hmm. uh, James Ituma, mm -hmm. Alan Wanga, both played for Harambe Stars, mm -hmm. both fantastic in uh, what they do. Right. And for me, these are superstars, you know. Mm -hmm. um, David Cheche, uh, Wanyama, of course, hey, my fans. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, I'm their fan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I said it yesterday of course, and someone corrected uh, me. Harambe Stars, former captain right there. Oh, yes, uh -huh. oh, yes. He's, 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 he's an amazing force in this uh, country. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Michael Olunga, he was a captain for Harambe Stars yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, he's literally scoring every single week for his Japanese club. He's about right. to get them promoted. Tekla Lorupe, oh, she's an amazing, amazing right. woman. She's managed to use her celebrity to do good in her shags. And I think that's something that uh, all celebrities need to pick up, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, Julius Yego, champion of Africa again, got right. a gold medal the other day. Right. Back to his, uh, I think he did 87.73 wow. meters, which is getting back to his uh, mm -hmm. good days. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. Humphrey Hayange. Oh, yes. I think half of Humphrey Hayange. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is, this is emotional. This is emotional for you, this right? This is emotional. I used to visit Joe Kadenge in uh, his house in South, uh, B, South B, yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, this was when he could actually afford a smile. Gary, former Manchester United goalkeeper. Don't ask me what I was doing uh, with no emotions? United people. No, no emotions there? I worked with him at Super Sports. <laughs> so, I mean, he's an amazing analyst. Yeah, oh, Dirk. Yeah, Dirk Novitz. <gasps> Yes, this was this year at the NBA. He's mm -hmm. the one who actually gave us a ticket because right. his wife is a Kenyan. She's mm -hmm. from, I think, Nanyuki. So he hooked us up with tickets. We went for an NBA game. Look at her just um, talking about the people on her WhatsApp. Dark Novitz, Larry, okay, right here. Dennis, yeah, this was at a, a, a football tournament in Kibera. Mm -hmm. And you're also really passionate about that as well, you know, grassroots football. Absolutely, because I believe not everybody has a chance to play in the main leagues. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we don't have a system where you actually get the best people mm -hmm. playing uh, for the top clubs. Mm -hmm. When you go for these tournaments in Kibera, you see amazing talent. You're like, why is this guy not making news around the continent or around the world. Right. That's at the NBA game. Yeah, mm -hmm. I miss selfie, yeah? Because a selfie is a must. Rio Ferdinand, yeah. Sometimes I hook up with Man United guys. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there yeah, you go. And then, of course, Thierry Henry, yeah. man. That was an amazing moment, right. you know? Right, You chat with these guys and you realize they're actually human beings mm -hmm. um, who just love the sport. And these guys have managed to make very good livings from sport, you know? So I wonder why in Kenya we can't see that there is the possibility of taking our sports people to that level. And that's a question that at times people ask, what's, what's the disconnect? Because you've gone and seen the talent. It's not a question of talent. The talent is there. Why can't we successfully monetize that? The disconnect that is in how we manage happen? our sport. And it has to start from uh, the top in government. Mm -hmm. Is it an Aumba Serikali moment? <laughs> is, that, is, that, is, that, is that what's needed? Aumba means I'm asking. I'm demanding. <laughs> right, right. I'm demanding you take sport seriously. But also us as fans, we have an attitude problem. Mm -hmm. um, when we, yesterday, there were people saying, why wasn't the Harambe Stars game free? You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We watch these things free. Hey, Ronaldinho. Uh -huh. <laughs> Those are my friends, I'm just right. saying. Yeah. You know? uh -huh. And Robert Perez, Invincible, you missed him there. <laughs> but yeah, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Mm. As fans, we also need to respect that this is how a sports person earns their living. Right. So when you say, I want the gate to be free, how do you think they're going to get paid, you mm -hmm. know? So pay, I mean, I think we should reduce it. I think, first of all, we need to sort out Kasarani Stadium so that the upper level, you tell people you're coming at 50 bob, mm -hmm. and then the middle level, you're coming at 100 bob. Mm -hmm. Make VIP even 2,000 shillings, man. If you want that comfort, pay for it, you right, know? Right, right. And then at the end of the day, 
let's invest in our sports people. That's what mm -hmm. you as a fan can do. Right. If the fans come to the stadium, the corporates will come mm -hmm. and then there'll be money in the game and then we can get organized, we can pay our people properly. Right. Our sports people don't need to have a side hustle. You know, we always criticize, for instance, our rugby sevens team and say, oh, we're always being beaten by South Africa. South Africans are professionals. They wake up in the morning, they play rugby, they train, they go mm -hmm. to the spa, they get massages, they get their diet looked after. Our rugby guys wake up and go to work. They come to the office like you and me. Right. And then in the evening, they go and play rugby until 10 p.m. They get home at midnight. <coughs> 4 a.m., they're back on the pitch. So they have to have a side hustle. Mm -hmm. They're semi-professional. And it's like, we don't understand that. And you can so, understand why that reflects on the pitch. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we expect them to be as good as South Africans who are paid millions to play rugby. Mm -hmm. So it's... Uh, and the beauty oh. about it is that, Carol, even as you talk and you're like, I can't say this again, you decided to take an initiative upon yourself to make sure people look at this differently. How did that idea come about? It's uh, some friends of mine actually mm. called me up and said, can you be part of this initiative we're doing called Jazza Study? I did something a bit similar about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. just calling up my friends on the weekend and telling them, let's go and watch uh, football. Right. And many people were like, Allah, we have a league. Mm -hmm. Allah, Nyayo Stadium is okay to sit in, you uh -huh. know. Uh, yeah, I've actually enjoyed myself. So mm -hmm. it's something people didn't even know existed. And then it died down because I got busy. I used to work on weekends when I had two jobs, Super Sport and Radio Africa. Right. And then when I stopped doing it, people stopped mm -hmm. consciously going to the stadium. So these friends of mine um, called me up and said, can you be part of this Jazz Study initiative? I was like, heck yes. And we started by asking people, why don't you go to the stadium? And it was very basic. Of course, security, top on the agenda. Our stadia are very dirty. Kasarani, mm -hmm. if you're not in VIP, it's actually <laughs> dirty. You need a newspaper to sit down, uh -huh. you know. And then they said, it's boring. You come in, it's 90 minutes of football, and you leave. So we looked around, and we're like, what do they do internationally? They have a pre-game show. Mm -hmm. They have music. Well. They have a halftime show. They have post-game show. Um, bring in the biggest artists. Look at the Super Bowl. Everybody mm -hmm. watches right. it for the halftime show. So mm -hmm. we're like, how can we combine what's happening on the field with, with what's happening off the field? And sometimes, we've, I mean, we've had a few activations. Um, for example, Camp Toyoya doesn't even have seating. So we went as they far went as uh, the the calling up a few friends of mm -hmm. ours. Hey, Raba, how about you <laughs> give us some of your bleachers? Right. He helped us out with bleachers. Uh -huh. So people had somewhere to sit. We called uh, friends of ours who own mobile toilets. They gave us toilets. You know, something so basic that keeps people mm -hmm. away. And then um, we got a couple of DJs who partner with us as well. So they play music before. We've worked with certain artists. Juakali, Waire, Hat the Band. They've come and done how time shows mm -hmm. at some of our games i mean of the last the last one year we've been a little bit slow because all this costs money mm -hmm. and we've been funding it from our pockets but the whole idea and we've been given permission by fkf and kpl to actually go in and activate but the whole idea is we look for sponsors to cover our costs and then the foot traffic still belongs to the home home team right so we try and fill your game and uh, we're getting you revenue in the process. We're getting you revenue. We don't touch mm -hmm. the gate. Whatever you, the fans pay to come in, that belongs to the home mm -hmm. team. So we mm -hmm. try to bring the crowds. We look for our sponsors to pay our artists. And the artists we've worked with have actually said, look, we also believe in the game. So we're not going to charge you our rates because right. believe me, you can't afford Juakali. <laughs> <laughs> not just Carol Randul and friends, no. But they're like, we love sport and we also mm -hmm. want to contribute to its growth. Right. So we will pay them something because, again, it is their job. Mm -hmm. um, but then we bring some excitement into the stadium. So okay. that's what the person's coming for. I mean, we have an activation in um, Kakamega in two weeks. I'm um, hoping to get some big DJs. It's, I think, Wazito versus AFC Leopards at Bukhungo Stadium. So we are hoping to bring in the entertainment, right. bring in the vibe, and uh, come and watch great football in okay. the process. Okay, fantastic stuff. And even as we talk about Jazza Study, one thing that they usually say, you know, picture tells a thousand words, speaks a thousand words. We have a couple of pictures here. Let's talk about this. Oh, my parents. Yeah. That's my late dad. He mm -hmm. passed away of cancer about six years ago. My mom. We look like age mates, huh? <laughs> I don't know if I look old or she looks young. <laughs> but yeah, and I was wearing a skirt, my goodness. Yeah? Thanks for cutting it halfway. <laughs> How long ago was this, though? This, this must picture. have been about eight years ago, or eight, nine years ago. Oh my goodness, yeah, I can't are. even say how long ago this was. <laughs> I don't think your crew okay. was born. <laughs> and why were there circles on your faces? What was going on here? Huh? 
The circles. Well, each I don't know why they're circles. I got this from a friend on Facebook. But yes, that's me in black. Right. That's Mohammed Amin, the late mm -hmm. Mohammed Amin with his uh, one arm. Mm -hmm. um, that behind there is Ladama. I think right now he's the senator of Nara. Right. Yes, we work yes. together. Uh -huh. And these guys with really bad fashion. <laughs> 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 oh my, yes, that's me with short hair. This was your this first? This was my first story for Africa Journal. I was interviewing uh, Mbilia Bell wow. at uh, Grand Regency. Uh -huh. And yeah, that was the crew. It was amazing. And, and yes, I was young. <laughs> uh, my sister and sister, my mom. Sister, uh -huh. And oh, it is true, your mom is like frozen in time. She doesn't age a day. And luckily I have her jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think I have her jeans. And now why are you cutting out Kisubu Airport? I'm young old, but now you have to <laughs> they see. They have to see. Hey, uh, to drive. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my dad. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, this is in Shags. This must have been about seven or eight years ago. Yeah. Right. And, you and know, I like have you a said. very bad weave. <laughs> <laughs> God. And even as you talk about family, one thing that really uh, you're passionate about, well, is also, you know, being a cancer warrior. It's something that you yes. do. And some people didn't know the genesis of that as well and why you're so passionate about Actually, it, my, know, my, my brother got mm -hmm. cancer a long, long time ago in the 80s when mm -hmm. he was a teenager. And he. He got leukemia or mm -hmm. Hodgkin's disease, and it was literally seven months of wham, bam. You're like, he's gone. You're like, you're asking what happened. But this was in the 80s. And what's so annoying is th that's what we're like 97, uh, 30 odd years mm -hmm. later, and we still have the same problems in Kenya. We don't mm -hmm. have enough doctors. Um, cancer treatment is, is it's too expensive. Um, it's being misdiagnosed. And of course, the key with cancer is if you don't find it early, um, chances mm -hmm. of survival are very, very low. So if you don't get the doctors in place first and foremost, um, you're fighting a losing battle. And then Kenyans, I always say take responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's good to accuse, but take responsibility. We don't do checkups. You know, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. With most cancers, the minute you're feeling sick, it's too it's late. It's too late. So do your checkups, do your regular mm -hmm. checkups. It's the only way it's going to be uh, uh, caught early. So yeah, right. I mean, I've done stuff with the, the, the Cancer Association, Edda's mm -hmm. Hope, uh, Hope for Cancer Kids. Where possible, I try to help raise money, raise awareness, but mm -hmm. it's damn expensive and right. it's unfortunate. I, I, I think the government, yes, now mm -hmm. I think the government should actually make checkups either really, really cheap or free mm -hmm. because you're saving a future cost. Right. But we already struggling with the cost of healthcare that a checkup is a luxury you know it's you're like okay how much is a checkup mm -hmm. you're like go if you're a guy above the age of 30 you should be going for a psa test you know it's literally a blood test right then you go for your biopsy or whatever it is those also cost a lot of money but it's cheaper than getting the treatment done mm -hmm. but if you're struggling to pay your rent, how is the a checkup? The last thing you'd be thinking about is a checkup. I, I feel good. Why am I going for a checkup? Uh -huh. You know, that's our attitude. Right. But unfortunately, we need to get in the habit of going for checkups, huh? Yeah, very true. And because of time, two more issues we need to talk about. This one's in the Yeah, I thought we were done. <laughs> not yet, not yet. First of all, um, you were with him yesterday uh, uh, at the stadium, Mariga. What yes. do you think about his running for Kibra? Because you guys Adon talk. Mariga. Yeah, I'm sure even probably when you saw it, <laughs> I can guarantee you just called him up. What do you think? Hey, it's his right mm -hmm. to run for parliament. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to criticize and mm -hmm. I'm not going to campaign for him. Right. But I wish somebody like him could be given, for example, the sports ministry to look after. Right. If you've ever met Marika, he's sharp. He's really outgoing. Um, and... He's willing to learn where he doesn't know, but he's also passionate about the growth of, growth of sport. If you invite him to a Mashinani tournament, he'll, also, he'll always come for it mm -hmm. because he knows the impact he has on the next generation. Yesterday, there was somebody, small kid, who, was, who took a photo with him. You should have seen that kid's expression. He's right. like, oh! <laughs> the parents were like, this guy's not going to sleep today, right. you know? Uh -huh. So, I mean, I, 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 I don't want to campaign for him. He's mm -hmm. a friend of mine. I don't want to criticize him because it's everybody's right to run for a parliamentary seat. And uh, yeah, I just wish him the best. Okay. But as a human being, why not, you know? I mean, people say you don't have this. They always talk about what you don't mm -hmm. have. Heck, look at the people who do have and who are running this country. Right. My goodness. <laughs> I'll save that for another okay, day. Okay, <laughs> we shall leave it at that particular point. But also, next month, uh, Edu Kipchoge. Uh, trying to, you yes. know, go sub two on that one. And I How think do, he can. Uh, do you think this is the time? Last time I think he missed it by what? About 
19 seconds, mm -hmm. 22 seconds, something like that. Um, and I listened to his speech the other day. He mm -hmm. said, I'm doing this because I want everybody to believe. Believe in yourself. Believe mm -hmm. you can do more than what you're doing now. You can mm -hmm. be better. You can grow. No, no situation is permanent. He's such an inspiration, right. man. Elliot Kipchoge, Ooh, he bowed down. <laughs> <laughs> Respect, and I wish him all the best as of well. Of course, so we're waiting for October the 12th. Between 12th to the 20th there, probably. Yeah, it's be a big depending story. on the weather. Yes. On the, yeah. yeah, and this last question isn't even mine. It's my director who is like, you just need to ask Carol. Secret to her smile. He has never seen... <laughs> I will guarantee you that if you've been with Carol in the office, there are times that smile isn't there. And it's a dark cloud because that means there's something big that's about... I'm on TV. <laughs> but he asks every single time they see you, always smiling, always jovial, always happy. I mean, it's, uh, make your, bring your own joy. Give your own joy. I mean, I'm not always happy. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. And we've learned with social media that... Uh, a smile can be very misleading, you know. Mm -hmm. That's for the gram. Right. It's for the public. Uh -huh. When you're in private, what happens, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. But if you can spread joy, why not, mm -hmm. you know? When somebody sees you smiling, also start smiling. It right. changes the mood. Right, right. Um, we know we had another boss who used to come to work. <laughs> and everybody's mood is spoiled. Right. So, heck, why not? Yes, so she's the boss. <laughs> but I'm not always smiling. smiling. Yes, yes, please. That's, that's a caveat. They're not always smiling, but most of the time she's a ray of sunshine as she walks in. And as we finish up, just yes or no, because people are like, okay, with all the passion she has for sport, are you running for no. something? No. Nothing? <laughs> Nothing? Are you I, sure no. she just wait and no. see? No. no My never. friends are going to kill me, but no. Never. I'm not interested. I, I believe you can serve from any capacity. Okay. So I'm not seeing you on a ballot paper no, anywhere, no, anytime no, soon? No, no, no. Okay, fantastic. We shall leave it at that. Carol Redul, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Jeff. Asante sana. Thank I know you. these are not your hours for waking up and I appreciate ah, the sacrifice. I'll be early to work. What am I going to do? <laughs>